Senator, let's start with Libya. Just hmm. this idea. We, we, many, many folks have gone on record saying that Gaddafi needs to go, but I think there's always the fear in the Middle East or in Northern Africa like this that who's to say that uh, the guy that comes next won't be worse? Uh, how, do we, how do we know that Gaddafi out is necessarily a good thing hmm. for the rest of the world? Well, that's one of the problems in the Middle East as all these, th this turmoil is deposing uh, some bad guys, some, some, some tough leaders that uh, have used force to stay in power, uh, killed a lot of people. Gaddafi probably right up there at the top of the, the murderous dictators uh, in the world. Uh, so nobody's shedding any tears over that. But your question is very relevant. Uh, what's to follow? Now we have had contact with the rebel groups. groups. Uh, we have had um, Americans in there talking to them, assessing it trying to figure out and hopefully make this thing go forward in the, in the right way. Uh, but you never know, and there's just a lot of turmoil. There's going to be upset and in, in, in turmoil throughout the Middle East, for I predict, for several months and years, and uh, we'll have to just see how it all shakes out. We know one thing. We're getting rid of despots. We're giving those people an opportunity for democracy and freedom, but uh, ultimately the responsibility falls on their shoulders to put that together and support that in a way that keeps them from turning into a, a terrorist state or Islamist state or a state run by the militants. Is Egypt better than it was? I mean, many people think now yeah. that, that yeah. maybe the, to what we have now is worse than Mubarak. You know, I think we have to take a long view. Um, under Mubarak, uh, there we did have a good relationship. They did have a peace treaty with Israel. Um, these are up in the air now. Uh, but nevertheless, this is happening across the world, particularly in the Middle East. We're going to have to live with the results. Hopefully, we can shape the results or help shape the results so that we will have democracies that are responsible citizens uh, and responsible countries. Let me switch up a little bit um, back to sort of our own debt issues. Mm. I know you answered a lot of the questions about this, of course, but I uh, um, believe you voted against the debt plan. I did. Plan. Do you have any uh, sense that you would do it? I mean, we've seen the markets go crazy in the last few yeah. um, few days, or actually several days now, mm -hmm. uh, any sense that you might vote differently or that we might have, should have crafted something differently here in order to help stabilize what we have in our country? Well, I definitely think we should have put a much more comprehensive package together, including tax reform, including incentives for uh, businesses to hire, buy new equipment, to expand their plants. That was not in it. Entitlement reform is something that has to be addressed long term in order to preserve those benefits, and it's driving a lot of our costs. Uh, there's real still a big question on health care reform as to whether this is going to work. I don't think it will. I think that needs to be adjusted. And then uh, we didn't cut enough spending. We, we've taken the tough steps here in Indiana, which Washington hasn't yet taken. And so I think we should have put forward a bolder plan, a more, more effective plan. And I think the markets have reflected that we didn't do enough. Um, th the argument from the Republicans generally is we don't need new taxes. I think there are certainly is a large part of Americans becoming suspicious about whether or not the wealthy and corporate America is getting a break that they don't deserve. I mean, make the case for why taxes, increased taxes, could not really be a part of the mix here, along with the spending cuts that uh, obviously the Republicans. Uh, what Republicans are saying is that the problem in Washington is too much spending. We're spending more than we take in. We need policies that grow the economy so we can create more wealth and we can. Ultimately, if more people are working and more plants are making profits, uh, that helps on the revenue side. Uh, first of all, we have to address this idea that we, government just continues to grow and grow, expand and expand. It's gone up 24 percent in just the last two years. So cutting spending has to be the first thing. Can we achieve more revenue? Yes, we can by getting our economy moving again. I, I've supported and, and uh, leading the effort on a comprehensive tax reform plan which I think will do that. We haven't used those uh, tools that have been used in the past, both by a Democrat, John Kennedy, and a Republican, Ronald Reagan, uh, for comprehensive tax reform that's put us on a much simpler, much more uh, uh, growth-oriented uh, track and has been helpful to the economy in getting people back to work. Hmm. Um, one of the, the key things about getting people back to work is getting jobs going again and, and the manufacturing base we hear it all the time about how we're mm -hmm. losing that does is it really time that we take some dramatic steps toward either uh, higher tariffs 
on products coming in, or um, almost some, of course, isolationism is a thought that's been out there for a long, long time, whether or not we would need to even shut down our borders to some degree to try and give protection to our workers. Do you have any, give any credence to any of those arguments, or, or is that just too extreme? We have to shut down our borders to illegal immigrants. They're taking jobs that American citizens ought to have, not illegal immigrants. But we want to open borders to the ability to trade worldwide. We live in a global economy. Uh, I just came from Vera Bradley. Uh, this is an innovative, start in your basement uh, business that now employs 1,800 people here in the, in the Fort Wayne area uh, and around the world. Uh, they ship all over the world. Uh, I just saw a whole stack of um, uh, boxes uh, to be shipped to Japan. Uh, this is an innovative, creative, new business that's putting people to work and we need to compete in a global society. Um, I have suggested and proposed through my tax reform plan to lower the corporate tax rate so that we can be more competitive. We are the highest tax rate of the 36 nations we compete with in terms of selling products around the world. So that's one way we can become more competitive. Keep those markets open for our goods, keep our borders closed for those illegals who are taking Americans' jobs. Um, I mean, can I have a question sort of back, back door on the S or the, um, the debt thing, S&P, I think S&P's president has now stepped down. And uh, there's a question, uh, I think it's out there, that some of the Democrats have been saying that we need to investigate S&P for the, debt, the credit downgrade. Do you se sense that they're being subjected to too much scrutiny over the move they made, or, or is it appropriate to, to really look at what uh, action they've taken here and to, and to analyze them? Well, it's hypocritical for anybody in Congress to investigate S&P, an independent agency who simply said, you guys are spending too much money and going in too far in debt, and we can't just label you as AAA, bottom line, best credit in the world. And, and Congress gets, some in Congress get upset at that, saying, oh, no, no, we sh you shouldn't have done that. What authority does Congress have, or what hypocrisy for Congress, which is spending taxpayers' money in an unprecedented way, to turn it to the rating agency that tells them, that you're spending too much money and say, we're going to investigate you for coming after us. I mean, this is, this is madness. It's, it's, it's ludicrous. The VA hospital, we asked you about that, yeah, I think, last time did. you were in, in, in. Any update there? Uh, we continue to work with the VA. I had a personal meeting with the secretary, General Shinseki. Um, we submitted a list of questions to them to get some information as to what their decision was going to be and what was the basis of their decision. We got an answer back that was not satisfactory to me, so we have redoubled our efforts and gone back to them. We're waiting for the next tranche. There are some hearings and briefings that are taking place actually today and tomorrow uh, that we will be attending and working with them. We want to get to the bottom of this. A commitment was made to Fort Wayne. Um, we understand VA's resources are more limited as we're cutting back on spending, but we want some answers in terms of how that commitment can best be filled over what time frame, and bottom line, how can we make sure that we're taking care of our veterans. So we're, we're involved in the, in the process and still waiting for some, some definitive answers from VA. What was, it, what was unsatisfactory about their answer? Well, they didn't directly address some of our questions, and particularly in regard to the commitment that was made in 2008, I believe it was, uh, to then Congressman Souter, uh, relative to the rehab uh, uh, process of the current Fort Wayne VA. Um, that now is in question, and we're basically trying to ask them why, what's changed, uh, what's the rationale behind this. Um, let's work together to see if we can uh, uh, honor that commitment because it's really very still much up in the air whether they will. It is. And, uh, you know, th they can say, well, the, the financial situation has changed. All right, well, show us how, show us where. Where are, you, where are you putting your funds that you have? How are you living up to these commitments? But bottom line is, how are we going to ensure that we're taking care of our veterans? Uh, how about changing subjects again here? Um, as we really get close to the, to the presidential race unfolding now. Uh, do you have any support for anyone in the, in the GOP side? Have you got to the point where you uh, 
feel like you're comfortable with supporting anybody? I have not uh, made an endorsement yet. I'm still uh, surveying the field. I'm a little bit in mourning that my man Mitch uh, is not uh, in uh, up there. I would have been behind him 100 percent and think he's the right person for the job because he's not only talks the talk, he's walked the walk, and we've done that here in Indiana. But for personal reasons which I respect, um, um, I understand that he's not going to do that. So now I'm looking over the other field, uh, the rest of the field. But as we found, those people who said, oh, it's too late to get in, that's not true. Um, Governor of Texas just jumped in and others may. So I'm standing back assessing the whole thing. I have one, one goal, one conclusion, and that is that four more years of this president is not the best thing for this country. And I think they've proven through their policies that they have not come up with the right things that get us working again get the economy back on track, stop us from borrowing money, um, and I think we need a leader who will um, position us for growth in the future and people getting people back to work, and we don't have that now. How about Rick Perry? You like him? Uh, I don't know enough about Rick Perry to draw a firm conclusion. I haven't followed him. I didn't even think he was going to be part of the uh, uh, race, but I think um, come one, come all, uh, get in there and uh, Let's hear from all of them, and the people will decide who, we, who our nominee is going to be. And I'm hoping it'll be someone that um, has had the experience, has, knows how to lead, and will make the tough decisions, not on a political basis, about, uh, but rather what's best for this country. I don't think we're getting that right now out of Washington. I'm going to have one last question, okay. and I know this applies to you because you were the ambassador to Germany. Mm. I think there's a lot of concern about Europe, and Germany seems to be at the forefront of that. Y your experience there, uh, how critical is it that Germany be uh, able to maintain that leadership role to, to give some stability to Europe? Well, the success of the European Union and the success of the Euro, their currency, is really dependent on Germany's success. They're the engine that drives the economic train for all of Europe. If that sputters or if that stalls, then there's real problems. And we've seen the markets reflect that in Europe. There's real concern about a number of the European countries of defaulting or not having the funds to pay their bills. That affects European banks as well as German banks. And so I think it's a dicey situation. And it may be something we ought to look at carefully because that can happen here if we can't get our act together. Right now, they're trying to shore things up there, we need to take the definitive steps here to make sure that we don't fall in the same debt trap that they're falling in.